Hello and welcome to the 12 on what is a very grey, wet and muddy day here in the northern UK. We are here for our level 23 episode of Purple Does Potions and I'll give you a little update on where we are at. 23 as I'm sure you'll know is a reasonably significant uh, level in terms of epic leveling or <laughs> as the name of the quest in this area I think it's the name of the one we're going to do actually yes kind of a big deal so um, we've specced all the way in primal avatar into the tier 3 to take the evergreen and to boost up our uh, shard storm to deal double damage but also to um, give us some um, temporary hit point shielding which is nice whilst I've still got the carrion swarm there just to be able to access these other things um, we've actually switched now to the dragon breath the acid dragon breath in the dr dr draconic draconic tree uh, which goes off conjuration, which is helpful to us. If that had been evocation, that would have been a major, uh, a major fall down. But our conjuration is our strongest uh, DC, and that at the moment is on a 66, so that's not terrible. It's on a par, I guess, with our. No, no, it's higher actually than our um, multivials, even though they're heightened to the max. So. That's actually pretty good for uh, for our standards. Um, otherwise, issue materials in this tree, I haven't taken it for that, but it's just a nice convenience because as an alchemist, you do burn through all the materials. So I've taken them off the bar now because we're not going to be letting go of that. Uh, minus 5% spell point cost is good. That in conjunction with the um, evergreen should help us particularly because we've now boosted up uh, a lot of the damage dealing spells full metas on everything now so hopefully we'll be uh, rocking and rolling I haven't changed too much our strategy uh, wading in with the big multi vials um, going in behind our helpless damage the mass freeze flash freeze and the um, where is it? Colour spray. I prioritised transmutation DC instead of evocation because that's quite a bit lower. And we're pushing that up towards the... Well, it's going to be over the 60s. It's going to be in the low 60s now in the uh, Reaper mode. So that's not terrible, but we'd still like it a little bit higher. Um, anything else to tell in here? No, not really. So I'm going to be... With the, the coming points, I'm going to be taking the uh, last of the transmutation. I can put a couple of uh, intelligence in there for a, a full DC on everything. And then we're going to be going after the um, conjuration DC in here. I think that's a good plan. Um, no, no gear was added at uh, 23 and I don't think any will be until the cap but if you recall the last episode if you saw it um, you recall I was talking about some of the the, the epic crafting f for some of the things you can find in the red fens and I ended up having a go at making uh, we, uh, we found these shaman's beads you might recall so we made them epic and I've paired them with a gem of many facets that I had um, just in case any are interested and haven't seen this uh, before in the game or not aware of how to go about upgrading it and that kind of thing I don't recommend messing with it in legendary levels unless you have an awful lot of threads of fate to, bet to uh, burn from the raids because that's what it could take to get the, the set bonus that you want on it. Otherwise, I think it's quite a nice thing to have in Epic. I wish I could show you my little archer, Red, who now I think he's got as good a set. His, his gear was rubbish when I started. I've been running him through a few TRs with the bear. 
is like the bear's companion, which is handy because, as you'll know, levelling an archer, a ranged character on its own, is painful. So uh, he now has a... Uh, for, for getting to 20, he has a five-piece salt marsh to go with um, two... Um, two of the... Um, set bonuses from the gem of many facets i think he has the uh raven sight and the this one at the bottom of this one actually it's the vulcor's chosen you can see it won't do anything too much for us if we ever get that bonus on the caster but the one i'm interested on on this caster is the shaman's fury up there at the top but yes my little archer has the has the two and this item basically is part of each set and the nice thing about it is it's also a craftable trinket. So if you have a crafter in amongst your stable of characters, you can, um, as I've done here, towards the casting side of things, because this is going to be for purple for his, uh, his warlock levelling, among other things, and for any other casters we've got coming. Um, so we've got some spell sight for extra spell power, spell focus mastery for bonuses to all spell schools, I made it as flexible as I could. Topaz of Conjuration will certainly help uh, this life, but I was thinking again about his Warlock times. Conjuration helps the uh, Evard's Black Tentacles, which can also do damage, so are quite nice for levelling. Here, we added... Uh, well, we've got Evocation Focus on the item itself, which will certainly help the Artificer and Sorcerer lives we've got coming up. And the Topaz of Evocation... It's just a, a straight plus one to that school. Also a diamond of spellcraft in there to boost uh, spell power a bit. These topaz, in case you were wondering, they can be got from the giant hold vendor, the level 16 giant hold vendor in return for the relics that you collect from the end chest for completing quests. Um, I was a bit surprised actually. These um, skill diamonds, I've just realized when I was, um, thank you very much by the way to all for providing this particular one, I looked all through my bags, couldn't find anything, so the spellcraft one, either it drops rarely or I've been quite unlucky down the, the times. Um, the difference between a level 21, which this one is, the plus 17, and a level 32, in terms of the points it adds, is only plus 3, so the level 32, believe it or not, would be a plus 20 which I found quite strange. Still, it's quite it's it's a uh, it's a serious benefit to us because uh, we've nearly got as as high as a plus thirty two would be there. Anyway, so that's what I've done to try to um, the the aim with the big aim with this was to try and produce something that uh, purple could use. Um, just to help a little bit with the Acid Warlock, because I, I do an Acid Warlock in between each one of these recorded things. But also for casters in general, we've got a, a Sorcerer, as I said, um, and an Artificer. I can't remember if we've any other casters to do. I don't think we have. But um, something like that will certainly be general enough that it would it would help most. The nicest one would probably be the Elder's um, set. That would have been the Gem of Many Facets plus the uh, Elder's Cap. But I didn't want to swap this out because it's got uh, Profane 2 on it and our Sapphire of Snow Peak Speed. And in the case of this life, Insightful Intelligence, which is nice for our uh, casting stat and so our DCs. Um, I think I derailed myself a little bit uh, regarding this gem of many facets. So if you didn't know, they drop um, from the chronoscope raid. You can totally go in there with a uh, legendary character on and uh, smash the heroic raid. It's the optional chest. I think the free so many people in the sort of wilderness area. It's the the optional chest that you get at the end for completing that optional objective. And they do drop fairly frequently. So if you have um, box accounts or whatever they call them, or friends willing to pass them to you, 
the raid will be done quite quick with the legendary character in a heroic one and I think you'll get a, a number of them there. The heroic ones, I they could be situationally useful, I suppose. My little archer has, has got one paired with a... Is it the raven's glove? Something like that, to give the, the, the raven's set, whatever that is. I think it's plus three attack and damage. Um... What was I going to say? The, but the those can't be re-rolled. Once you, once you get them to drop, you can't change them. But once you create an epic one, which is done by um, going to the altar of epic rituals in the 12, same place we've been in the past, or if you saw the last episode, it's that same altar that we went to upgrade... Um, these uh, things from the red fens to level 20 and it's the same deal you just need the pack ingredients plus the item the heroic item but in this case because it's a raid item you also need five greater tokens of the 12 which um, you can find from either the epic or legendary chronoscope raid or the, the easiest one, although it's a bit of a pain to flag for, is the Zoabi's Revenge in the Desert Sands. If you've got a character sitting at the cap, you can run that every three days and get yourself a token. It's going to take, uh, what, three to five minutes to complete on most uh, legendary geared out characters. So I'd say that was your quickest and best source of uh, stacking up these greater tokens of the 12, if that's of interest. Um... So yes, five of those, and once you've got your epic gem, you can go to the a bit further past the altar that I was talking about, down to the bottom where the the lava is, I think. And there's a there's another altar. Is it legacy altar of uh, rituals or something down there? And you can then uh, just chuck your gem of facets into that altar in fact instead of carping on i am in the 12 aren't i why don't we can actually see it almost from here can i can i get there or maybe am i gonna have to uh am i gonna have to no i can get there okay no 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 okay so that was the one we were at, the Altar of Epic Rituals. The one I'm talking about is the one down here. And all we would do, we would throw our... I'm not going to do it because this is crafted and it has the set bonus we want on it. But we would just throw it into the window, click Forge, and the set bonus on it would change. And you just do that as many times as you want, totally for free with an epic one. And wait until you get the set bonus uh, or a set bonus that takes your fancy um there are two different bonuses as you can see that appear on each one the wiki tells you uh, what can possibly appear for part one and part two so you can see what com what possible combinations um it's the same system for the legendary when you upgrade to a legendary one a legendary gem but you need each time to pay 100 threads of fate, which are a raid currency. So if you don't raid very much like me and you don't have very many of these threads, I strongly would advise against uh, doing that because there are other nice uses for those threads of fate. If you do and you have thousands of them, well, go ahead and good luck. I would still recommend just going for one set bonus that you can use. On my archer, I spent a bit of time, maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, re-rolling the thing until I got um, two bonuses that I could use. He has Raven's Sight and this Vulcor's Chosen that you can see here for his, um, his levelling from 20, which I thought was lovely. But uh, for a legendary one, when you're paying threads each time to, to do it, you you would, in my opinion, be well served just going picking one set that you would like to see and, and going after that. Otherwise, it's going to become very expensive. Once you've got the bonuses you want, you can go into the uh, crafting hall, disjunct the um, 
the gem just like you would for any anything you want to craft on and put your uh, minimum level shard and your your craftable things that you want on there like you can see on on uh, on here that we've done and uh, the set bonuses remain so don't worry about that the set bonuses remains through uh, the disjunction i think if we were to uh, in fact i'm pretty sure if we were to put this back into the altar and crunch it again to change the set bonuses i have a feeling we would lose our topaz and all the the kenneth crafted stuff on so do be careful before doing that unless you're happy to lose the the stuff that's on it um so yeah i'm hoping uh I'll, I'll try and show you the uh, the things on my archer when we uh, when he gets to the cap because uh, I'm quite proud of that little gear set. <laughs> it's as good as I've ever made, I think, even for capped characters. He has um, is it three different set bonuses there on that gear? No, actually four because he has a three piece heroic Shan set going on there as well. So I've never had anything like that. My uh, druid, Fools, who you might have seen in the, the odd quest, who sits at the cap for uh, ages now, he only has one Feywild set and just makes do with that. So, uh, yeah, four, four sets on one character. It's quite a departure from the norm for me. So I will try and uh, show that, maybe just with a, a little bit of pride, because normally it's a mishmash like this that I'm using. But I am hoping that these two bits will come in handy for uh, levelling as the Acid Warlock in future. So our work will not have been in vain. Um, what else do we have here? Yeah, there's a small display bug I've come across. Um, seems to be, well, it was it was only when we went to 23. I've just done a quest now to test where we're at. I think it might be something to do with taking this, the, the thorn thing for the temp hit points, because otherwise I don't understand the... Um, I'll see if I can get it to reproduce while we're here. The gold skin. Oh, actually, I better not because you don't get your uh, mana back, do you, in, uh, in the quests anymore. The gold skin, which obviously you can see on the screen, is uh, a golden buff, so you can see when it's time to recast it when it wears off. It's, um, it's disappearing, the, the effect on the character. I suspect when I do the shard storm, but I'm not totally sure. And uh, it, it looks like it's run out, where in fact I look on the buff bar and there's still plenty of it left. So I don't quite know what's going on there. Like one thing's superseding another or something. Um, I was very pleased with how we went on in the jungle of Kyber. We did that, um, the... Von 1 to 4, of course not the 5 and 6, because that would have entailed going in a public room. I'll get there one day. Um, and in the Von 3 in particular, against the Beholders, I thought we did very well. We've got all the tools. If they did hit us with uh, level drain, we've got the Greater Restorative Draft to get rid of that. We've got the frog from Incredible Distance, which worked very well, because uh, as many of you know, I'm sure, the Beholder Fortitude saves is not their strong point. Uh, if they did hit us with the anti-magic thing, so we couldn't use regular stuff, we still have uh, spell-like abilities, which were working fine. The, the spell-like ability from, uh, I think, the Multivile work too, because that's an SLA, isn't it? And that one too from the uh, Bombard Tree, plus uh, Shard Storm. Uh, we had Carrion Swarm at the time, that was working too. And Colour Spray, so I was able to hold the offending things as well on occasion. Uh, what else have we got here? I think that is about it. 
sorry for waffling on about the uh, crafting, but for, for any of you who didn't know, it is now possible at this um, legacy altar to make some really decent uh, level 20 gear between salt marsh and red fens and uh, and you, you don't have to upgrade but the the borderlands has some nice gear too so you can end up with a really nice if you have a, a particular build that you like and that you're doing let's say racial lives in you can end up with some really nice gear to throw on at 20 enjoy some set bonuses and and make your uh, your journey from 20 to 30 a bit uh, a bit more uh, easy or push the skulls a bit more as you prefer okay let's get back to it speaking of pushing the skulls what uh, sort of level should we attempt this on we tried um two before and we did reasonably okay didn't we i don't want us to end up I mean, think that the danger always is that we get hammered because we certainly can't take a hit or two. We can dish it out plenty, but uh, the if it's on the receiving end, we do struggle. So let's leave it at two and see how we go on. Nimue casts a spell to send you to the nearby village. We're going to be looking out for this. Um, this disappearing gold skin it is a little bit of a pain for me because i use the um oh what's that in there i use the um the visual thing as a cue for when it needs to be you know just like i do displacement for when it needs to be redone you see there it's popped up and I, I am pretty sure it's the shard storm when we trigger that that's going to cause it to go off. Can we make a big pile of things with these wolves here, perhaps? Come on. Nice. Well, there's always one or two. Right, shard storm going in now. Shardstorm obviously overlays the um, the character with a green thing there. Yes, and once the green thing goes off, we lose our uh, thing. But can you see on the buff bar, it's still there with 580 odd uh, points left. So I'm finding that really inconvenient. Mr. Reaper, I'm finding you inconvenient too. Please go away. <coughs> finding this lag a bit of a pain also. Things just moving forward in fits and starts there. Now, is it going to count that? Oh, no, it's not. The frogged ones are just counted as dead, aren't they? Okay. The sounds of something huge echoing off the canyon Pretty wall. sure we're not going to be able to turn this thing to frog, but let's remember our boosts. We're in the right um, colour, orange, so let's see if we can get some, uh, some nice purple numbers against this thing. I can't see the numbers, but I'm hoping they're purple. Yes, I threw in the elemental combination a time or three, and uh, as well as doing quite a bit of damage itself, it prepares the target for receiving more damage from us, so that's good. So I'm just going to have to keep a watch manually for this um, this gold skin. That's a, that's a shame. You enter the cavern. These gigantic tunnels extend further into okay. the rock than you originally thought. Oh, that's lag. Something is causing the creatures in the water to grow to an enormous size. Perhaps the art. That was pretty good. Okay. 
I think we have a fear reaper at the back there. That's less good. Okay, let's just launch. We got everything bar the fear reaper, I think. He didn't want to be a frog. Okay. You'll be a frog instead. I'm just having a little bit of trouble adjusting. I've just changed the number one button from the short cooldown uh, carry on swarm to this dragon breath. So if you see some strange looking dragon breaths or something, you'll maybe sympathize a little bit with that. Of course, just doing one life of each thing, it does pose its problems. I tend to find towards the back end of the, the life, I'm beginning to be a bit more um, in tune with the build and the, the combinations of buttons and that kind of thing than I was at the start. Trying to frog those and of course they're immune. Not immune to multivile though, are you? Not too much is. We still have our gold skin, although we can't see it. And that, that definitely wasn't happening um, before the, uh, the level 23 enhancements from... Um, from Primal. So if any of you else are having these issues, it's either the Evergreen or the At Its Core from the Thorn. I haven't done anything else, any other change. So it's it's definitely one or the other of those. Or, or this, this Thrive thing, because I, uh, I, I can't believe it's that. I, I just think it's the... Um, It's something to do with these these two one of these two because the the epic strike the thorn the shard storm was working fine I was still seeing my um, um, gold skin after it had worn off until we took those uh, higher tier enhancements so I don't quite know what's happened there they just don't seem to want to work with each other you be a frog? No, nobody wants to be a frog today. They're all miserable. It is lovely when it works. I I, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed the uh, ballistas. I should have recorded that, albeit I ended up Swiss cheese from the last one, so they had the last laugh, but uh, the ones before got absolutely smashed. Now, can I do something a bit a sneaky here, perhaps? If there's no Reaper in here, could we just... Oh, there's a Fear Reaper. Oh, crud, there would be. Can I just stay away from it? it follows me I'll deal with it but hopefully not and nothing survived in the dawn's early light that is what we like to see I still have only a strength of about 18 so I'm not picking anything up because I don't want to suddenly find I'm encumbered. Oh, <laughs> you got to love that. I 
that is quite a contrast, isn't it, to the... Uh, I know, I know we can, one of the frustrating things is we can't really measure properly against our um, last Tempest life because all of that epic was done with the uh, the illicit invasion going on. But uh, it's quite a contrast the way we seem to be sailing through on a slightly higher level. Well, that was on Elite, wasn't it, for most of it? Because needs mustard. But. Uh, He's really going along nicely now. I think he he does have a problem with spiky boss damage. The one the quest before this one, the other man's treasure, is it also in the twelve? I um those um red is it griffins, the platinum griffins or something? I think we're just about running out of gold skin now. Those platinum, whatever they are at the end, they were hitting pretty hard. Of course, I had the tools and didn't use them to stay away from that. I could and should have uh, sprint boosted and just hammered them with our big attacks and then we would have been perfectly safe. So saying other things are hitting hard is not an excuse, especially if they're melee. Melee shouldn't be getting near this character. the door opens. Somehow, you can sense magic radiating the artifact sits on a pedestal in the center Gonna take me a quest or two to adjust to the, the to having the dragon breath and not the, uh... As things start to go dark, you can just make out Mechtech carry on the room swarm. The I should be using, I should be making more use of the dragon breath. Under the artifact's influence, creatures that were gigantic moments ago now seem less. My standard go to is the uh, multi vile spell like ability that you just saw there after a freeze. That freeze, as I've mentioned in the past, is quite good because it's a yellow one and it often triggers the. Um, I wanted the sprint boost there because this always feels so slow. It often triggers the um, uh, orange pyrite reaction. It would now if I hit it now, which is obviously very nice, especially in and around the boss fight. These once deadly traps have little effect on your giant form. It's nothing more than a feast. Any loot there, yes. Now, quick while we have our big boost going, put the other boosts on. Come on, let's get stuck in. I think our big uh, boost is going to run out before we get there. Let's send everything in anyway. I know he can hit pretty hard, that one. Let's hope we're not on the receiving end. Nice. And we did get some purple numbers. That elemental combination is lovely for getting uh, vulnerability onto the, the opponents. I'm more than happy with the way that's going. And I think we've got to say, we pretty well steamrolled that quest, didn't we? I know you're in a bit uh, in the lap of the gods with what reapers pop up and that kind of thing, but uh, good luck to them getting through... Uh, this uh, set of munitions, we've got two multivials with all the metas on. We've got that caustic overload on a short cooldown, which is pretty nasty too, AOE. This uh, elemental combination hits pretty well on its own and prepares uh, things 
for more damage from the multi-vials. And then there's a dragon breath for anything that survives that. So I don't think we fired that hardly, if at all, in uh, in that quest. So we've got an embarrassment of, uh, of options, attacking-wise. And the defences aren't too shabby either. Um, I'm dwelling on on all the offense and it's true to say I mean spell power look we're 654 and that we can push that higher we can with a potion of hero look so we're, we're pushing up towards 700 on acid which is pretty great in lower epic and look at the acid spell crit chance now we've got that little set bonus going from the gem of facets 42 isn't terrible I don't think so uh, yeah and when you bear in mind the damage that we are doing, the extra damage against helpless targets from being in the falconry tree, the helpless damage, that's very nice too. I'm planning to definitely take uh, Crush Weakness at... Um, we, we didn't finish out, did we? Definitely planning to take Crush Weakness at 25 to go with that uh, helpless, so that will get us up to 45% extra damage to the helpless. And as you've seen there, my go-to is um, the Flash Freeze, which is working pretty well, at least for now. And that does cause Helpless. So anything that gets uh, hit after that, as you can see, is decimated. It might be the case that I'm overdoing it, and uh, I could just get away with bombarding things from distance with this stuff. It, it probably is at these lower levels and that I'm just uh, making work for myself. Maybe if I pushed it up to something like Reaper 4, I could benefit uh, more from the helpless strategy. Perhaps in time we will uh, find out. If if uh, that were to be the case, and we could be effective on, on something like R4 uh, going forward, I'd be delighted at that, because it's not something we've uh, done regularly, if at all. Certainly not without help in in the purple series so i'll uh, i'll let you know how that goes but on this evidence we are certainly in a good place that was uh pretty well rock and roll wasn't it okay i think that about wraps it up for this one i will we were just um coming towards the end of the evening star one chain so i'll go ahead and complete that and maybe go on into uh shindling see how we stack up there thank you very much as always for looking and i will speak to you in the next one take care